again everyone and welcome to another video diary. Thank you so much for checking out the first one. I wouldn't be doing this if you hadn't. What I do that's a bit different to a lot of filmmakers is I don't just direct my own films. I often make my own costumes as well. And I can now confirm that thanks to Light Films I will soon be doing a video advert for my costumes and that will be all over the internet. And before that happened I wanted to tell you about my costumes myself and get you to know them really, so um, that's what today's blog post is going to be about. But before then, you've been sending in your questions, so I'm going to try and answer as many as I can. What has been your most challenging project to date and how did you overcome it? Obviously the longest in terms of time period that I've done would be Jar of Angels, my most recent. There was literally nothing I didn't put into that film because I had five jobs on it, or however many it was in the end. and. It's not quite finished yet and it's taken about as long as a feature would do to shoot and it's been fantastic so far. You know, In terms of most challenging in time scale that will have been the biggest one to date. The most difficult shoot was one that happened uh, about three years ago. It was a film called Fireworks and uh, Sam was actually on that one. And we had one shoot that was in the middle of a field. Uh, if anyone wanted coffee, we had to plug the kettle into the generator while someone held a torch. It was freezing, it was late October, the winds were crazy, we were in a little tent with no light and the wind was blowing it around and we were literally there all night. But everyone did it you know, out of love because they wanted to do it and um, we were all freezing, we were all very very glad to get back to our hot water bottles. But. Um, yeah, I think it was worth it in the end, but in terms of absolute endurance, that one would have been the biggest one for me. Who is your favourite director, both indie and mainstream, and why? Mainstream directors have to be Peter Jackson, Baz Luhrmann, Tim Burton, particularly Peter Jackson and Baz Luhrmann. They made my favourite films, I, I love them, they've inspired me all the way along, seriously. Indie directors, I, I really, I'm getting into Lone Scherfig, I think, and education was great, and um, quite keen to see what Richard Ayyadi does on his next one as well because loved Submarine but um, obviously yeah Neil Oseman, Tom Wadlow, Crash Taylor and uh, me as well. How did you get into directing? Again Peter Jackson, absolutely Peter Jackson. I, um, I grew up doing a lot of theatre and theatre directing and um, it wasn't until I saw Lord of the Rings age 12 that I actually um, realised you could do filmmaking as, as a job and that it could be this amazing magical thing and I, I read his all his interviews about it and I was like that sounds like the most amazing thing in the world I can't believe someone can get paid to do that and I was still doing theatre all the time when I was growing up and I got very bored of the limitations if you wanted someone to fly in theatre and you didn't have strings you'd turn the light off make them run up a plank and then to the lights on, well, hey, they flew. Not the same. Uh, filmmaking, you can make magic happen, and, and that that was really it for me. Here we are in my costume department again, and um, you saw it last time, but I really wanted to talk to you about the costumes you're seeing here and what films they've been in. This is Marianne's dress from the opening night. It was worn by Lucy Hagen Walker. And it's probably the, one of the biggest ones I've done to date, but I, I love the, the feathers on the shoulders. I always thought that was a bit crazy until you saw it on camera, and then... It's have worked out okay actually. Uh, this one was another one I did fairly early. It's very much inspired by Satine's smouldering temptress dress in Moulin Rouge and I mean it absolutely as a tribute to Catherine Martin because I love it. You do briefly see it in the opening night and I'm hoping you'll get a good look at it in the video advert when we do it. Another one here from the opening night. This was Dorian's costume which is played by Teddy McBride and it's one of the only male costumes I have in storage but I love the contrast between the sort of the rougher fabric of the waistcoat and this amazing like animal print and then we've got this really amazing brocade. Okay and over here we've got one of my other Halloween costumes. This was basically a copy of the Corpse Bride costume worn by the character of Emily in Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. I had a lot of hand dyed lace on the trim and a lot of the lace had to be really worn through for this one because everything had to be really really tatty and you can see a lot more of this one on my blog actually and me going around town very very blue. This is one of the costumes for the upcoming Paradise Corner which is a 1930s film. I love all the different lace and panelling, a lot of it's vintage and you have all these sort of go days in the skirt of it. This was one of the first costumes I made for Crash Taylor for a sort of film interpretation 
of Red Riding Hood, having her in a sort of an ivory off-white colour because Tom Wadley, the other director, is really keen to see that dress covered in blood. He says to me a lot, great costume, can't wait to see it covered in blood. And here's one I'm working on at the moment, it's completely new, it's for a model called Lozzie Beth Godfrey to wear on the video shoot. A lot of pleating on the bodice as well as beading detail and it's definitely a work in progress but I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. Okay so that's all for today, next time I'll be reporting from the set of the costume advert so you can see how it all goes and in the meantime please keep sending me your questions and I'll try and answer as many as I can on the next video. Thank you. <laughs>